Okay, so today's video is going to be about um, risk management. And uh, so far this has been a tough video for me to put together because I have a lot that I want to include in it and I'm trying to keep it under 10 minutes. So I'm just going to dive into it immediately. Uh, the basics of risk management have to basically evolve around your account size and a percentage of that account size of what you're putting up to risk. So risk management is very important because then you have a specified loss. So you're not just putting on huge trades like maybe this trade you take a $100 loss. And then you say, okay, the next trade I could actually put up, you know, maybe widen up my stop a little bit more. Maybe I'm not even trading with a stop, but the next trade you put on is like a $500 loss. Then in the future, you get a good trade in. Okay, you make 150 bucks, feel pretty good. You say, now I'm on the right track. And then, bam, another loss hits you. And because you didn't really have a fine system put, in, put together, you're taking these odd losses, which is just kind of kicking you, basically kicking you in the stomach again and again and again. So um, how do we uh, put together a pretty good system? Well, this is based off of the 1%. Uh, trading rule. So with the 1% trading rule, it's saying whatever your account size is or whatever money you've set aside for a trade, people do it different ways. I base it off of my whole account size, but there's other people out there that say, okay, I'm willing to put up $5,000 to trade with what's 1% of $5,000. It's 50 bucks. Um, or if I have a hundred thousand dollar, uh, maybe a $50,000 account, maybe I'm only putting up $10,000 on trade. So 1% of that it's a hundred bucks. So that's basically kind of what I put together here, and it starts off, the account size starts off with about $9,000. You can see it loses, and it's in a losing streak. So every time it loses money, I recalculate the account to find out, well, what's 1%? Because uh, I need to have a risk profile set up for this. So another thing is important that, you know, you have a ratio type system. So a one-to-one, -one, two-to-one, or three-to-one, and basically what's this saying? Well, any of these figures, the risk profile is always going to be the amount of money you're willing to put out in risk. Now, on the second number, which is like, first it starts off 1 to 1, 2 to 1, and then 3. That's basically what you're trying to make out of that. So say, just say theoretically, each one of these. Each one of the trades I'm risking $100 on. The first trade, I'm risking 100 to make 100 Second trade, I'm risking 100 to make 200 then then the third one is risking 100 to make 300 So good setup. And it kind of helps me put together a predefined system where I know how much I can get out of a trade. And sometimes you can really look at a chart and say, well, what's the moving average? Does it move 50 cents within a day? Does it move $5 within a day? I've seen a lot of different varieties. And that's another thing you have to kind of set these positions up on. So depending on how heavy you're going in, if you go in really heavy and you have a uh, profile set up where you're only looking to risk maybe $100, say it's a $10,000 account, right? And you're only willing to risk $100 because that's what your account's basically telling you. That's 1% of your account. But you're going in really heavy. Maybe you went after a cheap stock and, and you can get like three, 4,000 shares. So uh, 4,000 shares, you know, you're making $40 on the penny. So you only have to have it go about two pennies against you and you've already almost hit your mark. So as you see the problem with that, it's not really good. I mean, for that, that's why you kind of have to have a, a good setup where you're getting the, you know, you're buying only the right amount of shares according to that security. And then in the idea that if you don't buy a lot of shares, you can open your stop up much more. But it's always evolving around, well, what is 1% of my account? So say, just for an example, I'm looking at a company right now. It trades within a range of $2 throughout the week. You know, if I, if I get out of that range, I'm going to just get stopped out of the trade. So I have to at least allow it that much movement. And this is just an example. So my risk tells me that I can only risk 100 bucks. So basically, this is telling me I can only purchase about 50 shares because per dollar movement, if I have 50 shares, I'm making 50 bucks. So if it moves against me a dollar, I'm losing 50 bucks. If it moves two dollars against me, well, I'm losing 100 bucks. And usually the way these setups work also is you want to be outside of that range so you don't get stopped out. Maybe you're testing a support. 
maybe you're testing a trend line. And, you know, basically what all that, I guess, would look like on a chart, uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and draw this out on this chart. You know, you just kind of have an area of, uh, you know, a trend line, and you're looking for the price movement to pull back, and you're trying to pull uh, buy on the pullbacks. But then you say, not all these are really perfect. And say this one hit the, the trend line right on. Okay. And if we would have been back in time, you know, maybe we set this up right there within that range, which this is a bad example. This is the ESH4, you know, so it's the ES Mini, but um, it pulls back theoretically there, and that could have been like maybe a dollar. So I got to be outside of that range. So right there and then, you know, you have to kind of put together how many shares can I really buy. So if it trades out of that range, it's still within that 1%, all right, only 1% of my account. Now, I've seen traders, you know, more aggressive traders risk 5% of their account on a trade. And uh, sometimes they do great. Uh, but once it goes against them, you know, you've risked 5% of your account. So think of it this way. when If you usually only risk 1% of your account and then you risk 5%, that's like uh, having five losing trades, a five losing streak trade, all in one trade. And... Um, you went against your um, risk management. And that's why when people make money in the market, you know, they do good. Maybe they make a couple hundred bucks and then all of a sudden the market takes it back. And it takes it back fairly fast. And it's not to say that the market won't do that. The market can take, if you, depending on what you risk, you will have yourself down the amount of money. You will put yourself down the most amount of money anybody could ever put you down. It's just you. So if you did good and you have a horrible risk management, uh, the market will take back everything it gave you. And that's why I'm making this video. So thinking about all this, I think one last thing I want to also say is, you know, everybody has a different account size too. And anybody that trades, you know, if you do good, you know your account size grows. It gets bigger so that that 1% risk suddenly starts to kind of grow. And you can actually risk more on a trade, but you can also afford to get more shares. So here's a good example. Say somebody with a $10,000 account. Didn't we just say earlier, I think it was like, to what, 100 bucks? 1% 1 of their account is 100 bucks. So the man that has a $100,000 account has put up $1,000 to risk. And that's 1% of his account. Now, some people will divide their account up, like at a quarters. And then they'll allocate that for basically a trade. So then they're, you know, having it set up in different areas of the market, and then they're only risking 1% of each one of those chunks. So there's several different ways to do it, but I mean, if somebody trades with their whole account like that, and they're trying to base it off their whole account, it's basically $1,000. And it would freak, I think, you know, if you immediately get into trading big, and you start taking losses and losses that you're not used to, it'll kind of freak you out at first. So you kind of have to step it up, and that's what this rule really helps you do. So um, that's all I could say in this video. I was trying to keep it under 10 minutes. It looks like I did it. So <laughs> if you made it all the way through this, I applaud you. So the next video I'm going to make is going to talk about uh, a parabolic stops and um, orders that you will put in on stops depending on what exactly you're trying to do. So I'm going to show the different varieties of those. Thanks for watching.